Okay, let's get started. Um, okay, welcome to the fourth meeting uh, of PNS Modern SSD's uh, course. And today is the last background lecture actually in this course, uh, as we plan now. Uh, but we may hopefully have one or more background lectures uh, time to time uh, this semester about some uh, other interesting topics on modern and flash-based SSDs. So please stay tuned. Okay. So before we dive into today's topics, uh, let's recap what we have discussed so far in this course. So we first learned the SSD basics, including SSD organization and NAND flash organization and operations. Then we discussed uh, several advanced NAND flash commands uh, that aim to improve SSD performance. In the last meeting, we also reviewed address translation and garbage collection, one of the core uh, functionalities of an FTL. Today, uh, I would like to uh, discuss some, something that uh, we should consider in practical SSD design, but is uh, often overlooked uh, in literature. So, and despite their high impact on SSD performance and lifetime, uh, even MQSIM, uh, the state-of-the-art SSD simulator, I would say, it does not properly support these features. And I believe uh, these should be uh, properly implemented as baselines in any SSD simulation. And these can also give us some food, good uh, food for thought for future research. Okay, let's dive into the first topic, uh, fine-grained mapping. I'm going to first provide a brief background uh, that, that is necessary to understand this topic. And as we all know now, uh, a PACE is the minimum IO unit of NAND flash memory. And in early generations of NAND flash memory, the page size was 256 bytes, but manufacturers have continuously increased the page size to 16 kilobytes over decades, uh, except in some latency optimized NAND flash memory. And there can be many reasons uh, for increasing the page size. For example, a large page size allows us to reduce the size of a peripheral circuit inside a NAND flash die, uh, which is necessary for specifying a page or a block to operate. Also, a large page provides high operation bandwidth since the latency increases sublinearly with the page size. Meanwhile, uh, the, the minimum IO unit of a file system called a logical block or a sector has also increased from uh, 512 bytes to four kilobytes in order to more efficiently work with the NAND flash based SSDs. However, as you can see, the increase in the logical block size is relatively small compared to that in page size. And it is somewhat difficult to increase the block size further because uh, operating system level IO handling is closely related to memory management uh, that is commonly based on a uh, four kilobyte memory page size. So increasing the memory page size would introduce unnecessary fetch or eviction uh, at the page cache, especially when workloads uh, uh, randomly access the stored data and also increase uh, the latency for fetch and eviction to move larger data. So in modern NAND flash based storage systems, uh, there is quite a large IO, uh, IO unit mismatch between the operating system and underlying NAND flash chips, which can significantly affect the performance and lifetime of a storage system. Okay, let's dive into the problems that this IO unit mismatch introduces. Uh, being combined with the ESB for write property of NAND flash memory. Suppose a host IO request to write a four kilobyte data A to logical block address four, where the logical block size is a four kilobyte, uh, while the page size is a 16 kilobyte. And as we discussed in previous meetings, 
uh, on FTL needs to maintain logical to physical mappings to service the future read requests on pages that are written in an out of place manner. So, and let's also assume that the FTL employs a page level mapping uh, where the uh, mapping granularity is the exactly is exactly the same as a page size. And many studies assume the page level mapping and the current version of MQSIM also supports this as a baseline mapping scheme. And since uh, the logical block address specifies a four kilobyte target block, the FTL uses the two least significant bits as a four kilobyte data offset and specifies the target logical page using the remaining most significant bits uh, which it translates a logical block address four to logical page size one. Then the FTL writes the target data A using a free page and updates the corresponding logical to physical mapping to service future reads for the data. Let's consider a new IR request to write two consecutive four kilobyte data blocks B and C with a starting logical block address one. The starting logical block address would be translated to logical page zero with a four kilo data of four kilobyte data offset of one. In this case, the FTL writes the data blocks using a new physical page, uh, physical page one in this example, and updates the corresponding logical to physical mapping. Note that uh, data blocks B and C are written in the middle of a physical page one based on the requested four kilobyte data offset. Uh, this is necessary to service a future read request to store the data. Since the FTL now maintains only the indices of 16 kilobyte pages, so the location of stored data must be specified by its four kilobyte offset of the requested logical block address. It means that the four kilobyte offset of the logical block address should be consistent also in the corresponding physical page. Also, even though there is a free space in physical page zero, uh, I mean here, uh, actually, if we can store, if we store a, a page a blocks of B and C in physical page, uh, physical page zero, we can uh, keep the four kilobyte data offset to be consistent in the physical page, right? But uh, it is not possible, it is, it is not the case. So we, we should not, the FT should not use that space uh, because, uh, because uh, that free space is already mapped to other logical blocks, uh, logical blocks of five and seven, five to seven, right? So this, so this is a logical block four, right, if you remember. And this uh, free space is already uh, mapped to uh, blocks, uh, logical blocks uh, five to seven, uh, which have not been yet uh, written. Let's consider one more request that writes a four kilobyte data block D to logical block address five that would be translated to logical page address one. Uh, the FTL has already allocated a physical page zero to logical page one. Uh, so, and, and space uh, for op the three is unused. So can you use the unused space for data D? And as you may assume, the answer is not likely because in fact, the cells in the unused cell, unused space, uh, the cells in the unused space have been already programmed due to data randomization. So to be specific, even though the FTL needed to write only part of page zero when it uh, writes uh, the page A, uh, the logical block A, meaning, yeah, so the, the part of the page zero is for uh, logical block A uh, is currently stored. Uh, and it must have, but, but uh, when it writes uh, the logical block A, it must have issued a page program command by sending some dummy data for remaining page, uh, unless there was a specialized operation, uh, something like a sub page programming command, because a page is the minimum uh, unit of read and program operations. And uh, even if uh, the FTL uh, set the dummy data to all ones, uh, which corresponds to a flash cells erased state, 
it cannot prevent uh, the flesh cells in the non-target part from being programmed because the O1 data uh, must be randomized to be programmed to NAND flash memory. In addition, uh, it is usually infeasible to program pages in an arbitrary, arbitrary order within a block since a reprogramming a page would affect the reliability of data written to its adjacent pages. So in this example, the unused space uh, in physical pages zero and one can no longer be used for future writes. So small writes uh, cause a significant waste of PE cycles, which in turn degrades the performance and lifetime of the SSD by introducing more frequent garbage collection. I have one question. Sure. Uh, I didn't understand why B and C can be written from um, in front. But in, in front, you mean physical page zero, right? Uh, no, 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 here, I mean, you, you mean exactly. this part? Yes. Yeah, so uh, let's see uh, this uh, request. So here, uh, this, uh, we use two least significant bits to specify four kilobyte offset, right? We do not store uh, these two uh, these two least significant bits into the uh, L2 L L2P mapping table, right? Because uh, this this number LBA uh, LBA uh, address, so so logical blur address specifies a four kilobyte data, right? But our mapping granularity is uh, uh, the same as the page size, which is a 16 kilobyte, right? Is it clear? Not really. <laughs> Not really, okay. So how should I uh, explain this more clearly? Uh, let me see. Uh, meaning that, so this, this is a physical page, right? And a physical uh -huh. page can have uh, at most four, four logical blocks, right? Mm -hmm. And this address uh, actually specify uh, the smaller data size, right? The smaller size of data, right? Okay. So uh, the, the way uh, we can specify this entire page uh, is just a discard, the sh uh, meaning more to be more specific, shift uh, this uh, logical block address to the right uh, by two, right? We just uh, do not consider this uh, four kilobyte offset because, you know, uh, this four, uh, four days, uh, uh, four logical blocks, their uh, physical page address is the same, right? Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so we do not consider uh, these two least significant bits when you specify a larger granularity of uh, data, right? Okay, makes sense. Yeah, that's uh, how we can um, play with these bits uh, for different granularity. Okay? And if we store uh, this data, uh, these two blocks, uh, at, uh, from the B, at, from the beginning of this uh, page, then it means that, um, yeah, it, it, it means that, but, but we store only this uh, physical page address into the mapping table, right? But the host system uh, will access this data B uh, by using the same address, right? Then we specify the logical address the FTL should specify the logical address based on the requested logical uh, block address, which is LPA zero. And it would go for uh, PPA one because we uh, stored uh, just a PPA. But we should, we should be able to specify the four kilobyte offset, right? And how can you do that? We use the requested logical block address, right? These, uh, these two least significant bit. But if we store the B uh, while breaking the, while not following this 
uh, four kilobyte offset, then we should read uh, this part. But if we stored uh, the data at the beginning, uh, from the beginning of this page, then we will return C, right? Instead of B. Is so for the so for the block zero x o two, we can only write from from the middle. So exactly. So so if this address is a zero two, then we should start from this, right? B C. This means Makes that sense. a lot of times the, um, there's just um, plain space left that's unused. Exactly. So so if the right uh, request size is not enough to fill the entire fish curve page, meaning yeah, the right to size right to size is much smaller than the actual page size. It incurs yeah, it causes a significant fragmentation within the page, right? Wasting a lot of space. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, there are two questions. Okay, not not to question, but some um, I don't know, poetic comments. Okay, hey, let's go. Uh, let's move on. Okay, so and uh, next, uh, let's see how the FTL finishes the right request. We have not yet finished this request, right? Uh, uh, the request to logical block five. Uh, with the data D. And since the mapping table only stores a single physical page address per logical page address, the FTL must store data block A uh, and D uh, in the same physical, uh, with the same physical page because they, their logical page number is the same. So for doing so, the FTL first to read uh, the previously written page from the NAND flash chip to the internal DRAM, for example, and modifies uh, the buffer, buffered page with the data to write, and then programs a, a new page using a new free page, page two in this example, which is called a read modified write operation. And as you can see, this uh, read modified write operation causes not only waste of P cycles, uh, but uh, P cycles and but also uh, additional read operation, uh, which is significantly degrades the SSC performance and lifetime. Now let's uh, think about a possible solution for this problem, actually, which is uh, quite uh, widely used in modern SSD, I believe. Uh, the key idea is to write a page only when there are sufficient data blocks to fill the entire page, physical page with, uh, using fine-grained mapping and page buffers. Here, the mapping granularity is now four kilobytes, meaning that a logical page address and a physical page address specifies a four kilobyte data chunk. And let's consider the same example request used in previous slides. Now a logical block address directly represents a logical page address, so no translation is needed, right? And uh, the FTL can buffer data A using a page buffer in the internal DRAM and updates the corresponding mapping. And in this example, we assume that the FTL already somehow knows uh, the physical page address that is going to be used, but yeah, it should be able to know, right? Because it is responsible for uh, entire address translation. But anyway, this mapping updates can also be done after writing the buffer data. Uh, the important thing here is that the FTL needs to uh, keep track of uh, where the buffer data uh, currently exists in order to service a read request to the buffer data, which has not yet been written to NAND flash memory. So if, the, uh, for example, for this data A, if a user issues uh, the read command to this data, then we should immediately return uh, the data uh, from the page buffer without accessing the NAND flash memory, right? Okay, for the next request, similarly with the uh, uh, previous request, the FTL just buffers the requested data blocks and updates uh, their mappings. And no write has not yet been performed. 
And for the last request in this example, after buffering data D and updating uh, its mapping, the FTL finally writes the buffer data at once to the same physical page. So compared to the naive page level mapping, fine-grained mapping significantly reduces the number of NAND flash operations uh, necessary to handle small writes, thereby improving both the performance and lifetime of the SSD. So fine-grained mapping uh, is highly effective, but as you know, there is no free lunch in our field. The first drawback is the increase in mapping table size. So compared to 16 kilobyte page mapping, the four kilobyte to fine grained mapping introduces four times larger memory overhead, requiring DRAM uh, whose capacity is around 0.1% of the SSD capacity if we assume a 32 bit uh, architecture. And considering that uh, modern SSDs provide several terabytes of capacity these days, several gigabytes of DRAM is needed for a fine grained mapping with a four kilobyte granularity which in turn directly increases SSD price and power and energy consumption. The second issue is about the durability of written data. And data durability is, as you may know, a property that guarantees that once the data is successfully stored or processed in more generally, uh, its effect uh, is permanent without any changes of stored data or processing results. In storage systems, data durability is one of the most important requirements as no one wants a loss or corruption of stored data. And as the page buffer is implemented by using volatile memory, such as SRAM or DRAM, meaning that the buffer will lose uh, its stored data once the system power is off. Uh, so when a sudden power off occurs, buffer data can be just lost if there is no proper measure. So to ensure data, data, data durability, manufacturers deploy large power capacitors inside the SSD, uh, which can supply sufficient power uh, for the SSD to flush all the possible buffer data to NAND flash chips. However, uh, as you can expect, uh, doing so inevitably increases the, the SSD price as well. So the conclusion here is that uh, even though the drawbacks of fine-grained mapping is not trivial, but it is widely used in modern SSDs as its benefits significantly outweigh the cost. For accurate SSD simulation, so we must consider this as baseline, I believe, unless uh, targeting a high, highly resource-constrained systems, because this significantly affects both the performance and lifetime of the SSD to evaluate, right? And one more thing is, although many, many prior works have proposed uh, indeed various mapping techniques to mitigate its memory and space overhead, uh, the problem is not yet solved, I, I believe. So considering that the SSD capacity has continuously increased and is expected to increase further to meet the high requirements on the storage capacity in this big data era, so it is still important to develop an efficient mapping scheme to reduce the memory overhead while providing uh, still the high performance. Okay, do you have any questions? Okay, let's move on to the second topic, uh, multiplane operation over management. So recall the multiplane operation that we discussed the last meeting. In modern NAND flash memory, a die contains multiple planes that can operate in parallel when the operations uh, target the pages at the same offset within the planes, as the planes in the same die share word line decoder, meaning that they can be activated at the same time. And to take full advantage of these multi-plane operations, the FTL needs to place data properly. The first thing I must mention is that while uh, the read pattern is somewhat difficult to accurately predict, except for large sequential reads, uh, the FTL has freedom uh, to choose the physical pages for handling host write request. So for these reasons, uh, multiplane operations are more frequently used for writes 
than reads. And to perform as many multiplane writes as possible, uh, the FTA buffers as many pages as the number of planes per die and flush them at once. And this slightly increases the latency per operation at device level as we discussed the last meeting due to the transfer of larger data, right? But significantly increases the write bandwidth. And as you may have already noticed, to sustain multi-plane programs, uh, the FTL needs to keep the right points of all planes in the die, uh, in a die, uh, the same, right? And doing so requires the FTL to perform data placement in a super block-based manner, meaning that the FTL creates a set of blocks uh, in different planes as a larger logical block. Uh, so which introduces another issue related to garbage collection. So recall garbage collection we discussed, uh, uh, yeah, also, also last meeting, I believe. So to reduce the number of copy operations is a reasonable choice for the FTL to select the block uh, with the largest number of invalid pages as a victim block, which is called a greedy policy. So when the SSD is running out of free pages, uh, the FTL uh, first checks the number of invalid pages in full blocks by referring to the status table that keeps track of each page's status in a block. And it selects the block with the largest number of invalid pages if we assume the greedy policy. Uh, so, and so for example, uh, block two uh, in this figure, as a victim block of the garbage collection. Then the FTL copies all the valid pages in the victim block to free pages and invalidates uh, the copied pages in the victim block. Now block M minus one would be the uh, active block or right point of the plane. And the victim block, uh, for example, block two uh, would likely be uh, used uh, as the next, next uh, active block. And let's consider garbage collection for multiplane NAND flash memory. So since updates patterns are different across planes in many cases, the block with the largest number of invalid pages would also likely be different across planes. In this figure, for example, block two uh, at uh, block two at plane zero uh, has the largest number of invalid pages within the plane while block one is uh, such a block in plane four plane one. And suppose that the FTL applies the greedy policy for garbage collection at the plane level, meaning that it selects different blocks as a victim block of garbage collection to minimize the copy overheads of garbage collection. The FTL would first read a valid page from each block by performing two single plane reads uh, and it can perform a multiplane write, a single multiplane write uh, to copy the pages to new blocks as their page offsets are the same in this example, right? And if the FTL keeps the data within the same plane, so it does not move uh, the uh, stored data uh, to another plane, uh, the, the FTL needs to perform two single plane reads and two single plane writes for copying uh, the valid pages in block two uh, at plane zero, right? So ideally, uh, but a four page copy actually can be done with just a two multiple reads and two multiple writes. But in this example, the FK performs four single plane reads, uh, one multiple writes and two single plane writes in total. And in fact, this is not the worst thing as now the SSD cannot perform multiplane writes unless it somehow first use or discards uh, the second and third page of a block M minus one in plane one. And there is no chance to perform multiplane writes after using blocks N minus one in both plane uh, because uh, after using this block blocks M minus one, the next active block uh, should be uh, block two in the plane zero and the block, uh, block one at plane one, right? So there is no chance to uh, perform multiple writes because their page offset 
uh, within this die uh, now are different. So this suggests that the FTI should select the victim blocks when garbage collection uh, is invoked with the same pay, same index, uh, same block index to sustain multiplayer write operations. So le let's see how the FTI can address these problems. So an FTI can adopt to super block based management that groups each block with the same block index, meaning each block at the same vertical position uh, in different planes of a die. Under, this, under the super block based management in this example, the FTL will select a super block one uh, as, a, as a victim blocks uh, for uh, garbage collection because the two blocks uh, with the block index of one uh, have the largest number of inbuilt pages in total within the planes. Now the FTA first reads all the valid pages of the two blocks, uh, which can be done with five single plane reads and one multi plane read, uh, and writes uh, six of the red pages to three pages in the current active blocks by performing three multi plane writes. And the FTA can keep uh, the last read page buffered uh, to write it later uh, to NAND flash memory with future writes by a multi plane operation so that the FTI can perform as many multiplane writes as possible. And this multiplane array block management enables the FTI to keep performing multiplane writes, thereby significantly improving SSD performance. However, in many cases, it can also increase the overhead of garbage collection as the FTI is likely unable to choose the block with the largest number of embedded pages in each plane uh, which in turn increase the number of read write operations required for copying valid pages. And in this example, as you can see, the FTL with super block based management performs a five single plane reads, one multi plane reads, and, uh, and three multi plane writes, while garbage collection uh, uh, can be done with uh, the same garbage collection can be done, not same, but Anyway, the garbage collection can be done with four single plane reads and two multi plane writes if the FTA choose block two in plane one and block seven in plane one as the victim blocks. So, in fact, it is somewhat hard to say uh, which level would be the most effective for multi plane over block management, uh, as it has not. Uh, to my knowledge, as it uh, has not been yet thoroughly investigated in literature. So to be specific, we can also keep the page offset to be the same across all the dies and planes, which would not only make variabling and IO scheduling much easier, but also metadata overhead for block management. So however, it may significantly increase the garbage collection overheads by selecting blocks with a large number of valid pages for uh, some planes or die. For example, here, you can see a lot of uh, so, so majority of pages of the block uh, is now valid page, which is yeah, in turn will introduce uh, the copy of all these pages. So in conclusion, uh, multi-plane operation can significantly improve SS performance, but at the same time, uh, it requires a proper management in FTL. So in current version, for example, in current version of FTL, uh, NAND flash model already supports multi-plane operations. But if you run simulation with the current version of NQSIM, you would see the, uh, the FTR perform almost no multi-plane operations due to lack of proper block management. So since multi-plane operations significantly affects SSC performance, uh, it also should be uh, properly implemented for accurate simulation. Okay, so this is all that I have prepared for today's lecture. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay, I think not. Okay, so uh, today's background lecture. Uh, yeah, so this is all for uh, today's uh, background lecture uh, and also for this course. But as I uh, discussed uh, at the beginning, 
So yeah, we may uh, inter, uh, deliver more one or more background lectures for some other important issues uh, as needed. So please stay tuned. And from next week, uh, we in, in this meeting, we will only uh, focus on the progress updates uh, for the hands-on project. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for joining. And please, please, uh, Okay, please stay a while for students. How should I stop the... <laughs> okay. I will stop sharing first. And let me hit the live streaming.